Let us move forward now, guided by the ideals of a bagong Pilipinas, and remain united in our mission to protect our skies, defend our lands, and serve our country. As the Philippines confronts an increasingly uncertain world, its armed forces are undergoing a transformative overhaul to meet evolving security challenges. With breathtaking landscapes and a rich cultural heritage, the nation is strategically positioned in Southeast Asia, making its military upgrades crucial. Significant modernization and training efforts are in progress across all branches. The Army is enhancing its equipment and training. The Navy is investing in advanced vessels and maritime capabilities. The Air Force is modernizing aircraft and readiness. The Marine Corps is acquiring amphibious assault vehicles and improving interbranch coordination. Special operations forces are upgrading equipment and reconnaissance. Cyber defense is strengthening infrastructure and expertise, and the Coast Guard is expanding its law enforcement and patrol capabilities. As the Philippines strengthens its defense and operational capacities, it is poised to better navigate complex security dynamics, securing a resilient and strategically aligned future. Let us get into the detail of it. Formation of the Philippine Armed Forces as a militia to oppose foreign control during the Spanish colonial era is the beginning of the force's long history. The Philippines' military underwent substantial change following its independence in 1946. The military forces have encountered several difficulties over the years, including as regional conflicts and domestic insurgencies. The Philippines is currently dealing with fresh geopolitical dangers, chief among them being China's persistent territorial conflicts in the South China Sea. Tensions have increased as a result of these disputes, therefore strengthening the nation's defenses is imperative. Modernizing the military is crucial for several reasons. The Philippines faces significant external threats, particularly from China's expansive claims in the South China Sea. To effectively safeguard its sovereignty and territorial integrity, the country needs advanced and up-to-date defense systems. As of 2024, the Philippines rank 23rd globally and 14th regionally in military strength. This ranking highlights the nation's strategic importance in Southeast Asia, but also points to a pressing need for modernization. Currently, 75% of the military's equipment dates back to the Cold War era, with only 25% being modern. This outdated equipment highlight the urgency for an upgraded defense system to address evolving security challenges. Responding to this, the Philippines intend to increase its defense budget by 6.4% to $4.38 billion in 2025. The objective of this budget is to augment the military's capacity to safeguard maritime concerns and facilitate the advancement of land, air, and sea forces. With the fluid security situation in our region, it is imperative that the armed forces of the Philippines, and of course the Navy, is substantially equipped, trained, and always on alert to respond to any and all exigencies that may confront our nation. The armed forces of the Philippines, which include the three main branches of the military, the Philippine Air Force, Philippine Army, and Philippine Navy, are responsible for overseeing all of the country's fighting forces. The Philippine Marine Corps is supported by the Navy as well. The force currently counts 173 total units in its active aircraft inventory. The Philippine Air Force PAF, uses both modern and vintage aircraft. Embraer, a 29 attack aircraft are utilized in conjunction with South Korean FA-50s as a light strike platform within the fleet. Modified Cessna 208 and ATR-72 aircraft are used by the PAF for maritime patrol and reconnaissance. American-made equipment makes up the majority of the transport and helicopter forces. The PAF has been concentrating on updating its capabilities lately. One prominent example is the newly renovated Basa Air Base, which is now undergoing major upgrades and is home to the PAF's FA-50PH combat aircraft. This base will receive more than 600,000 square foot parking apron, funded by a $32 million Pentagon contract as part of the Pacific Deterrence Initiative. This upgrade will help the base accommodate up to 20 aircrafts to enhance its operational capacity. To address current and future threats more effectively, 
the Philippine Air Force PAF, requires several key upgrades. One of the most critical areas is the acquisition of new multi-role fighter jets. The PAF is currently evaluating the Saab Gripen E and the F-16 Viper as potential options. The Gripen E stands out for its advanced radar systems and lower maintenance costs, while the F-16 Viper is known for its proven reliability and extensive global support network. Both aircraft offer significant improvements over the existing fleet and would greatly enhance the PAF's operational capabilities. In addition to upgrading its fighter jets, the PAF also needs to enhance its airlift capabilities. New transport aircraft are crucial for enabling the rapid deployment of personnel and equipment, ensuring that the Air Force can respond swiftly and effectively to various situations. Modernizing air defense systems is another priority. Upgrades in this area are essential to protect the nation's airspace from evolving threats and to strengthen overall military readiness. Furthermore, Investing in advanced surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities is vital for maintaining the security of the Philippines' airspace. This is particularly important given the rising tensions in the South China Sea, where China's assertive actions pose ongoing challenges. By implementing these upgrades, the PAF will be better equipped to safeguard Philippine airspace. With a wide range of equipment, the Philippine Army deploys a range of tracked and wheeled vehicles for use in fire support, reconnaissance and troop transport, among other combat tasks. These cars are from Brazil, Turkey and the United States, demonstrating a wide-ranging global collaboration. The artillery of the Army consists of thousands of mortars and a combination of Israeli and American towed systems in 105mm and 155mm calibers. Multiple Launch Rocket Systems MLRS utilize the K-136 rocket from South Korea. The Army is in possession of 567 armored fighting vehicles, which include mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, infantry combat vehicles, and tank destroyers. In addition, it possesses 325 pieces of self-propelled, rocket, and towed artillery, in addition to 18 tanks. To further its effectiveness, the Philippine Army requires several key upgrades. First and foremost, the modernization of infantry weapons and equipment is crucial. By updating these resources, the Army can significantly improve its combat effectiveness and better adapt to current and future operational demands. In addition to infantry upgrades, the acquisition of advanced artillery systems is necessary to increase the Army's firepower and precision. This involves securing new towed, self-propelled, and rocket artillery systems, which will provide the necessary fire support in various combat scenarios. Improving night fighting capabilities is another critical area of focus by enhancing technologies that allow for effective operations during low-light conditions. There is currently a major modernization initiative underway in the Philippine Navy. Notable developments include Hyundai Heavy Industries' launch of the BRP Miguel Malvar, a guided missile corvette, which is scheduled for delivery in 2025, and the second corvette, which is scheduled for delivery in 2026. Additionally, the Navy plans to purchase its first submarine, with the French Naval Group's Scorpion-class submarines being the most likely choice. The acquisition has a budget, $1.3 to $1.8 billion, and is a component of the Horizon 3 modernization plan. The Mexican Navy and the German Defense Minister's recent trips, among other international engagements, demonstrate the continuous efforts to improve maritime security and international cooperation. Transmitting a message of peace and respect to all nations, promoting co coexistence and cooperation. The Philippine Navy requires several key upgrades. One of the primary needs is the acquisition of new frigates and corvettes. Continued procurement of these advanced vessels is vital for strengthening the Navy's surface combatant capabilities. The addition of the BRP Miguel Malvar and the forthcoming second corvette will significantly enhance the fleet's operational capacity. Another strategic priority is the development of a submarine fleet. The planned acquisition of scorpion class submarines, along with the establishment of domestic manufacturing and training capabilities, is crucial for expanding the Navy's underwater warfare capabilities. Enhancing maritime patrol and surveillance capabilities is also essential. The Navy must continue to develop these systems to effectively monitor and secure the vast waters of the South China Sea, where rising tensions require vigilant oversight and response capabilities. Additionally, the modernization of naval bases and infrastructure is necessary to support both new and existing vessels. Upgrading these facilities will ensure that the Navy can efficiently maintain and operate its assets, 
thereby maximizing operational readiness. The Philippine Marine Corps, PMC, is strengthening its defenses against challenges to national security from the inside as well as the outside. The establishment of the Maritime Security Battalion on July 1, 2024, to safeguard maritime passages and assist with littoral operations, is one example of recent advances. The Marine Corps' transition from counterinsurgency to external marine defense, especially in the South China Sea, is reflected in this unit. Furthermore, the Marine Corps has started conducting littoral operations and exercises related to marine domain awareness, using small boats and fiberglass-reinforced plastic boats, retraining units like MBLT-4, MBLT-6, and MBLT-9, is another part of the transformation that aims to improve their amphibious and coastal defense capabilities. To strengthen its capabilities, the Philippine Navy should focus on several key areas. First, the acquisition of new amphibious assault vehicles is essential to bolster littoral and amphibious operations, providing the Navy with greater versatility in various combat and humanitarian missions. Next, enhancing training programs and conducting more rigorous readiness exercises are vital for improving the Navy's operational effectiveness. Lastly, improving integration and coordination with other branches of the armed forces is crucial for conducting effective joint operations and maritime defense. The primary focus of the Philippine Special Operations Command, SOCOM, is the modernization of its training and equipment. Modern cooperative drills, particularly with American forces, have emphasized enhancing operational efficacy and marine security. To better address sophisticated threats and carry out specialized missions, SOCOM is also advancing its intelligence and reconnaissance capabilities. As of early 2024, the Philippines experienced approximately 880 cyber attacks daily, with government and educational institutions being the primary targets. In response, the government has allocated significant funds in the 2024-25 budget to strengthen cyber defense. This includes increased funding for the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordination Center CICC, and the Department of Information and Communications Technology DICT. Key initiatives involve expanding the cyber defense infrastructure, enhancing workforce competencies through the Philippine Skills Framework, and improving the nation's capacity to manage cybercrime incidents. The Philippine Coast Guard is reinforcing its capabilities by acquiring advanced equipment and additional patrol boats. The aim is to boost operational readiness and enhance maritime law enforcement. Recent trilateral alliances and collaborations have focused on strengthening maritime law enforcement across Southeast Asia, underscoring the Coast Guard's commitment to safeguarding Philippine maritime interests. In January 2024, under the ReHorizon 3 proposal, the Philippine Military Modernization Plan allocated up to $35 billion for the next 10 years. This plan prioritizes strengthening defense capabilities in response to escalating regional tensions and revises the previous acquisition list to address current challenges more effectively. The budget focuses on bolstering the Army, Navy, Air Force, and specialized units, aiming to enhance the country's external defense and support comprehensive modernization efforts across all branches. The Philippines is also intensifying its defense cooperation with international partners. Significant progress has been made in the U.S.-Philippines alliance, with an increased rotational presence, joint exercises, and the negotiation of new agreements, such as the General Security of Military Information Agreement. By the end of 2024, the Philippines is expected to finalize a defense agreement with Germany, which will bolster Manila's modernization efforts, improve military training, facilitate the purchase of equipment, and reinforce a rules-based order in the South China Sea. Additionally, the Reciprocal Access Agreement with Japan, signed in early 2024, allows for joint drills and mutual access for defense operations, addressing shared concerns over regional security, particularly in response to China's activities in the South China Sea. These partnerships and agreements are crucial for enhancing the Philippines' defense capabilities and integrating the country more closely with global allies amid rising regional tensions. The Philippines' armed forces are undergoing a comprehensive transformation to address evolving security threats. Across all branches, significant modernization and training efforts are underway. As these upgrades strengthen the country's defense and operational capacities, the Philippines will be better equipped to navigate complex security challenges, ensuring a more secure and strategically aligned future. Thank you for tuning in to our channel. 
If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth analysis of global issues.